Let's talk about getting gold capped. In this video, I will talk about 10 ways you could obtain that gold cap in Classic WoW, both to give you some ideas of how to do it, and to show you how long it would take you. I'll also wrap the video up by giving you some advice on what I would personally do in order to obtain gold cap if I was to try to obtain it. Before we get into it though, what is a gold cap? Well, in Classic WoW, the gold cap is 214,748 gold. To make it a rounder number, we'll go up to 214,750 gold, so 2 gold above the actual cap. Number 1. Mage Boosts If you sell Marauden Boosts at 10 gold per person, aka 40 gold per run, and let's say on an average you also get 10 gold in loot per run, so 50 gold in total per run, getting gold capped would take you 4,295 runs which based on the 5 resets per hour cap would take you 859 hours. You also have the 30 resets per day limit as well, so getting gold capped only through this method would take you 143 days, plus a couple extra runs, so technically 144 days. If you do this for 6 hours and you hit that 30 reset cap every single day. You could also speed this up by leveling up more mages since the 30 reset limit is character specific. Note that this number is based on you actually doing 5 resets of Moradon per hour, which is pretty unrealistic as most people are only able to do 3 to 4 per hour, but if you are able to do Sulgurub or Scarlet Monastery, and you get the same gold per hour from there, this is the math for it. Number 2, Sulfarak Raw Gold Farming. This was probably the most popular gold making method in the early life of Classic WoW, as this was how pretty much all the mages were able to make their gold early on. Back then this was about 50 gold per hour, but as we have progressed through Classic, I believe some of the items you pick up have become more valuable when you actually auction them. So let's set the price here to 75 gold per hour. In that case, obtaining gold cap would take you 2,863 hours, and once again since you have a cap of 30 resets per day, which if you can do 5 resets per hour, which equals to 6 hours of farming per day, this would take you 477 days. Once again you could speed this up by leveling up several mages, or classes that can solo Sulfarak, so you can farm more than 6 hours per day. Number 3, Dire Maul Lasher Farming. Honestly, this is a really really solid gold farm which you can do solo as any class with AoE abilities. However, it is best to do as a mage, paladin or a priest for efficiency. As of phase 5 on my server, this is easily a 125 gold per hour farm, so we'll say 125 gold per hour from here. In that case, obtaining gold cap through this method would take you 1718 hours. Once again, 5 resets per hour, 30 resets per day, 6 hours farming per day, this would take you 286 days, and you could speed this up by leveling up more characters that are able to farm this, but in that case you would have to farm for more than 6 hours per day. Number 4, Herbalism. Now this is something everyone can do regardless of which class you play, and you have several different options that all can give you pretty good gold per hour. First of all, you can farm Fire Bloom in Searing Gorge which yields a fairly decent gold per hour, or you can farm Herbalism in souls like Ashara for Dream Foils and Mountain Silver Sage, or you can go out there and chase some Black Lotus. Pretty much all of these methods should give you anywhere from 50 to 100 gold per hour, and possibly even more as well. At peak, I have earned 150 gold per hour steadily from farming Fire Bloom in Searing Gorge. Number 5 Fishing As a fisherman in Classic WoW, you have several different places you can fish and several different types of fish you can target and sell. You can farm for Nightfin Snapper, since zones like Moonglade where I have been able to earn, on an average 75 gold per hour, if I fish during night time when the spawn rates of Nightfin are at the highest. Or you can also farm for fish like Stonescale Eel in Tanaris, where you will also find some Oily Blackmouth and Firefin Snappers, as well as tons of Mithril Bound Trunks, which can contain greens, blues and epics. Here's a screenshot of someone doing some fishing in Tanaris after phase 5 for a longer period of time, and as you can see this is pretty decent, 133 gold per hour and you can actually do this without even being level 60, 
you just want to have 300 skills in fishing, which you can obtain already at level 35. However, to complete the quest for artisan fishing, to go all the way to max skills, you either want to be level 45 or get help from a friend, as you need to visit some higher level zones to complete the quest. Either way, fishing can easily net you anywhere from 75 to 140 gold per hour. Number 6. Transmuting or Cooldown Crafts For this one I'll just list the prices and profit that I'm making on my server, so we can see how long it will take to reach gold cap only through these crafts. Transmute Arcanite gives you 10 gold profit every 2 days, and getting gold cap this way would take you 42,950 days. If you have 10 transmute characters, we can divide this number by 10, so in that case you would reach gold cap in 4,295 days, or basically 12 years. Transmute water to ear, the recipe from Skolo questline, gives you 13 gold profit every single day, and getting gold cap this way would take you 16,519 days. Likewise, if you have 10 transmute characters set up, we can divide this number by 10, and then you'll get gold capped in 1,652 days. Mooncloth gives you 10 gold profit every 4 days, and getting gold capped this way would take you 85,900 days. And Cure Drugged Hide gives you 10 gold profit every 3 days, and getting gold capped that way would take you 64,490 days. And if you have Tailoring and Alchemy, and you make Mooncloth and the Water to Air Transmute on cooldown, you will obtain Gold Cap in about 13,855 days. If you have 10 characters, we can divide this by 10, giving you Gold Cap in 1,385 days, or about 4 years. Number 7. Class Specific Gold Farms Here we have a lot of different farms, and I guess I already mentioned a couple of them earlier in the video, but I thought I'd share some farms for other classes as well. Warriors can solo RFD or Resorphin Downs, and if they bring enchanting they can disenchant the boss loot, and pretty much always obtain small radiant shards, which are about 3 to 5 gold each. You do need enchanting though, but you don't need any skill, and this is about 75 to 100 gold per hour on most realms. Paladins and mages obviously have their dungeon AoE farms, where they can also sell boosts, Rogues can farm pickpocketing and they can do vault runs inside BRD to utilize coffer keys. Hunters can farm Dire Mall North tribute runs. And every other class can utilize some form of clever boss mechanic or pathing to kill certain bosses to either sell a boss loot or disenchant. You also have Dire Mall jump runs where bringing herbalism and mining can net you a decent gold per hour as well. Number 8. Non cooldown crafting. This is usually alchemists making money by people paying for convenience. Make potions used for raids and sell them on raid days when people panic buy. Obtain rare recipes and craft potions or flasks and sell them on the auction house or advertise your rare crafts in trade chat and ask for a decent fee. Enchanters with a wide variety of enchants do this quite often in trade chat and you have a few very rare recipes for enchanting where people charge close to a hundred gold fee just to do the enchant. Number 9. Investing For anyone that has been watching my channel for a while, you will know that I love investing. I have invested in items since the beginning of Classic, and in fact, most of my gold at this moment comes from investing in items. Most of my investments were phase 5 investments, so I have been selling them off lately and the gold just keeps coming in. I think my biggest success so far has to be the elixir of poison resistance, the recipe itself, which I bought 30 of for an average of 5 gold each, and as of right now I have sold 25 of them for over 100 gold each, giving me 20 times return on my investment. Looking back on it, I probably should have invested in a few more recipes, but I thought 30 was enough and I am actually quite happy with the gold that I'm receiving from it anyway. There are tons of other investments I have made as well, and pretty much 99% of them have been covered in some video at some point. The amount of gold you can make from investing is pretty much endless, and it's all about research and risk versus reward and timing the market. Number 10. Flipping items on the auction house. This one is a bit more complicated, and since I have made videos in the past explaining this subject more in depth, 
I'm going to give you the short version here. You buy cheap and you sell expensive. If you see a low amount of something on the auction house that is in demand, buy them all and reset the price. For example, let's say in total there is 100 fire bloom on your auction house and they are 30 silver each. Buy all of them and set up new auctions for 75 silver each. In this case that's only a 30 gold investment. And if you sell 40% of your auctions, you will make your invested gold back and you will have items to spare. As for my personal preference, I usually farm gold whenever I'm in the mood for it, or whenever I have a ton of free time, or when I'm short on gold. I then use that gold to invest in items that I think will go up in price later in the game. I also use tailoring to set myself up with Mooncloth for phase 6, which I will either use to obtain some tier pieces myself, or I will sell for profit. I also play the auction house every now and then, but I'm mostly into investing since that is way more safe than flipping items. My personal go-to's when it comes to gold farming is either Dire Maul Lasher Farming or Fishing in Tanaris, since I like being able to do things by myself and I like watching Netflix or YouTube while I farm gold, so I don't really like the pressure of boosting others in dungeons, even though that could potentially yield more gold per hour. Alright guys, that's it, that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did, please slap that like button and subscribe to the channel. And let me know in the comments down below how you're making Golden Classic. And that's it, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.